We are live. No, we're not. No, we're recorded. not live. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two weeks. It's been two weeks, right? Something like that. Yeah, it's, it's, it feels like it's been 20 weeks. Yeah, it's episode 14. 14. Of Indecisive Cinema. Uh, I'm Carlos Hernandez. I'm a very tired Jeremy Knight. <laughs> yeah, he works but a lot. One, that, he one that's here. He is What's here, going which on? is good two weeks later. Yeah, how you guys been? It's been two weeks. We missed out. We didn't miss out anything big. Uh, my mm-hmm. daughter's birthday is past. But... Yeah, a lot of movies are out. Yeah, um, I don't know though. I guess that well, we, we missed like his Ex Machina, which we're going to talk about. We have a bunch of movies to talk about, um, but uh, that that technically came out. Was it this week or last? I don't know. But yeah, so we, 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 we we're not that far behind on yeah, yeah, some no, of the new releases. Yeah, we're a week behind on Avengers, of course, but. <laughs> that uh, that we'll also discuss, and both of us have seen that, which never happens. Yes, we I never, know, we <laughs> never both see. Well, you knew I was going to see that opening. Oh movie. yeah, yeah, I figured. About but that. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll talk about that. We also, I mean, we've got a. There's no movie news other than one little piece that I actually saw uh, uh, on Facebook right before I started okay. rolling. Um, Mad Max is getting really terrific reviews. reviews. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I want William see Bibliani from Crave Online. Um, uh, I don't always love his reviews. I, I like him though. He's great. Um, they run the B movies podcast. Uh, him and uh, Whitney Seibold, and uh, he gave it a ten out of ten, which doesn't happen ever. Holy um, shit, for and real? then Alonzo Duralde from Linoleum Knife um, gave it a. Or he didn't give it a star rating. I don't think. I don't know. But uh, he he gave it a great review. So one wants to see it again. So I mean, that's exciting because that movie looks great. To so to hear from people that it is very good is <laughs> really exciting. Because I mean that that trailer is so terrific. yeah, it's, it's really really. Like oh gosh, it's artistic so great. and it's really wide, like expansive, it's like operatic, too. operatic. Like just in the, the, the classical, word. you know, score underneath it all. There's the word operatic. It's, uh, it looks terrific. I'm really excited. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's great. That's really the only piece of news that we've got. Um, I mean, it's, I guess we can just talk about what we did the past two weeks. What did what did you what have you been doing? What have you been up to? I, I've been laying low. I mean, uh, this is the first time that uh, the show has been postponed. Not because of me. Um, <laughs> yeah. so I've been laying low. Um, uh, my daughter's birthday party two weeks ago, my youngest one, and then my oldest one's uh, birthday party. So um, we that's when we saw the Avengers, which we'll talk about later. Um, and we had a good weekend. Uh, uh, you know, Gloria is 11, so it's fun, you know, tearing it up. We went to Kima, and we went to the boardwalk, went on the rides. Have you ever um, been to Kima? Like I have. I never went on the rides before. The rides are okay. Over. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I mean, I wish it was better. I mean, Yeah, they're kind of crappy. How's the Pleasure Pier? Is it better? Uh, I haven't been in because it's like $12. I mean, it's actually probably cheaper than Kima is. I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. I'm assuming it's better. It looks better than Kima does. Like better rides. Yeah, the rides, was, I, I only went on like two or three Pleasure Pier, though, you can at least go to the beach. I don't know, you know, mm-hmm. like... And Kima's pretty, you know, and especially oh, like when they do yeah. like 4th of July. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we go out there a lot for 4th of July. I have a... Um, a client a, or a client family friend of ours that mm-hmm. um, has a house on the water like oh, nice. uh, right like looking at the bridge oh, um, yeah. it's it's really really nice I mean it's a pretty pretty area and there's some cool little mom and pop shops down there as well mm-hmm. but there's not I mean it's not the, the, the rides aren't yeah, that, yeah, anything spectacular I, she went on luckily she mm-hmm. um she found one ride that she just went on over and over and over again so that killed a good two or three hours so um, it was hot, you know. I got I got sunburned. My Ronda got really bad. Sunburned. How do you get sunburned? It was hot that day. It was out. And me, I got sunburned. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. I mean you don't see it, brown dude. Yeah, I'm brown, but she got really bad. She got. I mean, a, I mean me, it makes sense. I mean, oh, oh, you know what? Oh my god, I have. To, I just have to report this, being that we're gonna talk about the Avengers. There's free comic book day, the day at uh, May second. Um, I had my books. I actually bought three comic books as well. And I put him in the back of her car, and I drove to her the job to pick her up. And lo and behold, she took over the driving. We went to Kima. I don't know when, because I don't remember seeing them in Kima either. But when I got on the boot, they stole the comic books out of the car. Nothing else. Nothing else. They stole the, my comic books out of the fucking car. I'm assuming they were comic books you're going to give away for free comic book day? Well, it said free comic book day. And so I'm assuming somebody who was like in Kima noticed... If it was Kiba, they noticed the door was open because because what happened was like Gloriana, we sent her out Sunday morning to get her makeup bag, and Gloriana says, "Oh, the door was open already." So then, when I got to the car later on that day to go to Joe's Crab Shack for Gloriana's uh, birthday dinner, my comics were gone, and I was like, I was freaking the fuck out, and I was like, "Oh my god, what's going on?" And he was like, "I guess I got more by the the kids' comic books are right here. They didn't touch them. Mine, I had like the, they had this special edition Avengers book, and they had this Avengers magazine, and they had Secret Wars." 
But I, I just got so mad that they took my books and it just <laughs> those are so my books. They're my comics. But anyway, that 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 happened also, and and then that was it. And then uh, the week passed, and now we're here. And uh, you know, this weekend was uh, or this past weekend, I uh, just lay low. Uh, Mother's Day, I took a round out yesterday, and. That's really it. Just um, been catching up. We're doing Buffy binge on Netflix. So. Oh, nice. Are you guys done with that already? Uh, we're up to season four, Buffy Angel season one. So what happens? I this always happens to me. Uh, I found this binge, this is Tim Weekly binge book at uh, uh Kroger's. Took it to the bathroom because I had to go to the bathroom. I think with me. And as I was reading it, it you know, like you know, you see all the these classic shows, and so with Buffy, and a couple other uh like uh show spinoff shows. You have to watch certain episodes in certain order. Hmm. I don't know if you ever heard that with binge watching. Rather than just like like, like don't just them. watch Buffy straight, which is what we were doing. We went through three seasons of Buffy in in like three weeks. Like once a week, we yeah. saw a whole season, and then now we run into a snag because we have to go back and forth between Buffy and Angel. Hmm. And some of them do work. Some of them are sequels to each other. Some of them are not. So it so since you can't stop. Because later on there are sequel episodes, you gotta watch them episode to episode to episode. But this actually broke it down exactly how to do it. Hmm. So there's actually some episodes you have to watch two episodes of Buffy, two episodes of Angel, then one episode, one episode, and then two and two, and then there's one last night, three episodes of Buffy, three episodes of Angel. I'm gonna ask an ignorant question real quick because uh, I've not seen either of those shows. I've seen Buffy. I've se- I have seen episodes of Buffy. So that's not, sure. yeah. um, but uh, are they in the same universe? Yeah, well, Buffy was. I don't know. I, I don't yeah, yeah, know no, no, you're right. You don't. Premise of Angel. Angel, Angel basically was uh, introduced as this mysterious was character. Both, right? Yeah, yeah, that helped Buffy out, revealed to be a vampire, gave him a cool background story. He became the Fonzie of the show, and then after three seasons, they gave him a spinoff where he did some type of like a '40s detective type show. Okay. Um, but yes, uh, Buffy and Angel were boyfriend girlfriend. So, you know, okay, gotcha. there are episodes that go back and forth. That makes sense. Yeah, so... Um, and, 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 and so we're stuck in the halfway of season four in both... Season four, Buffy, season one of Angels. So once we're done, you know... <laughs> shit, we got so many... <laughs> I think we'll be done with this by uh, August. <laughs> so, Speaking um, of television shows, I uh, started one recently. What you start? I finally started Twin Peaks. Oh! <laughs> I am... Uh, I am... I am Five episodes in. I actually started it like three nights ago. Um, it's fantastic, man. Thank you. Thank you. It's so great. Thank you. It's the number one show of all time. And Thank it. You. I don't know about that yet, but I. 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 I it's up. To, I mean, it's on my. It would be on my top tell me twenty he, for now. But tell I'm only he four doesn't in. do things that. Ha- Again, I mean, I know you're young, you know, but at that time. None of half of the shit he did wasn't done. It was yeah, exactly. Like, well, but it's still yeah, yeah. no. But that's the thing though, and that's what's so impressive about it. You know, when yeah. it, when it opens, that opening is very nineties. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And I and you know and I've like I I started it uh, like months back. I I started watching it and and that that you know that first like minute of every episode comes mm-hmm. on and I was like uh, I don't know if I'm in the mood for this. You know, this is very. It, but then it starts. Yeah. And it moves. It moves unlike any even some modern shows. Yeah. I think the pace of that show and the pace and like the just the, the I don't know, it's it's really tightly constructed yeah, and yeah. Yeah, I mean the, the the plot moves forward in each episode like yeah. in ways that, you know, other like even some of the greats like The Wire and Sopranos and stuff like that mm-hmm. don't I, I mean I think it in it's and it came out ten years before the Sopranos yeah, yeah. even. Well, not like eight years, I guess, before The Sopranos, because The Sopranos was 99. Yeah, Twin Peaks came out in 1990 and ended in 91. The movie came out in 92, and yeah. Sopranos came out in 1999, yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, and it, so, I mean, considering that it's before, yeah. and that that's considered kind of the, you know, not so much the modern era of television, because we have yet to, like, yeah, determine yeah. exactly what that modern timeline era. looks like. But I mean, those but Sopranos and the Wire. I mean, I, a lot of people haven't seen the Wire. Critically, it's it's you know um, considered to be one of the best. I think it's the best show of all time. But um, you know, the Sopranos though was really the, the kind of page turner. Yeah. But I think this is just a fantastic. Like just from yeah. like I said, from a yeah. from a. I mean, it's still shot like a TV show. Yeah. You know, I mean, no, no, that, no, there's no. not. I can, I can excuse that. And he, and he wanted and, that. That's what. But he there's wanted, still yeah. some. There's still some movement and some just style to it that you don't you you don't even see in like like normal sit, sitcom. Um, even narrative sitcom, you know, yeah. uh, no, that, that's I don't even know. That's a, almost a contradictory statement, <laughs> but um, you know, the nowadays, I mean, it's it's really an impressively modern show. Yeah. Um, considering it was, and so that's why I can't imagine at the time just being 
so strange and so out there. <laughs> uh, I just finished the episode with the midget, oh, the dream, the dreams. He goes, "Oh my boy, yeah, which is episodes. brilliant." Yeah, um, so yeah, like it's it's really fantastic. I mean, like twenty minutes in the first episode, like when they start showing all the characters and how they're impacted by yeah. uh, is it Laura Palmer? Laura Palmer. Laura Palmer by the whole Laura Palmer death is just terrific, and it's like. I was in. I was like, "Cool, this is this is great." Yeah, I'm um, glad. I'm glad. So I'm I'm totally hooked. It's uh, I will report back um, on that <laughs> in the preceding weeks. But good, good. Yes, yeah, uh, Cynthia, Rhonda, we're gonna do. We we started with Buffy, even though I wanted to do number one Twin Peaks, number two Buffy. Started with Buffy. Now I found out that Quantum Leap is on Netflix and it has the original music. Unfortunately, I told her we're gonna have to wait for Twin Peaks again and do Quantum Leap because just in case they pull them. Because like Netflix had Quantum Leap. Don't you own Twin Peaks though? I do, I do. That's I'm not. Good no, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about Quantum Leap because I don't yeah. own Quantum Leap. Um, real quick, I know we were talking about TV shows. We got into it. Um, NBC aired Quantum Leap in the from the eighty nine to ninety four. Um, it had you know classic music and and um, if you want to compare Tarantino and Paul Thomas Anderson's use of music in their early films, um, Quantum Leap actually used music perfectly on the show. Um, when it came out on DVD, season one was fine. It was only eight episodes. NBC decided to pay for the rights. But after that, they refused to pay for 23 episodes of music. And so they released it with, like, Muzak yeah. or different songs, and it drove the fans crazy. Um, and then I wasn't going to go buy them over on Amazon UK because they're, like, expensive. Mm. And, they, so and, expensive. And, and everyone keeps fighting that. You might not be able to watch them on an American player, even though someone said there was a trick to do it, but I don't want to get caught out there. Big long story well, short. Yeah, it's a region thing. They're, they're region B, I believe, or region A. Yeah, well, no, but, but the guy or was, one. some guy was saying, oh, it's region two, but don't worry about it. When you put it in, it'll tell you that this is the wrong region. Go to DVD something from your system yeah, and whatever. download. And I'm like, I'm not going to do all that. So you I can never install, I'm sure you can install some software that allows you to unlock well, Yeah, and that's what he said. It'll unlock it. Yeah, but. I never did it. Never want to take the chance. But my nephew, two weeks ago, we were hanging out for Gloriana's birthday party. And he said, he said, listen, um, I just watched Qu- Quantum Leap Season 2 and all the music was there. And I was like, so I went on when I got home that night. Every single episode with the exception of the last one. Is on Netflix and all the original music on it. So I told her right after Buffy and Angel, my favorite TV show uh, number three is Quantum Leap. So we're gonna have to do number three, watch Quantum Leap, and with the original music. So that's what I'm gonna do next. And then after that, I'll do um, Twin Peaks and then Lost because Lost is number five. That's gonna take forever. Yeah, yeah I know, but, but <laughs> and it's just gonna progressively get. But she worse. loves it. You know what I know about Ronda? It's like <laughs> God forgive me. It's like like she's never seen TV before, like good shit. Like she watches dumb shit her husband made her watch, and it's like when she watches these shows, she, like she gets it. And it's like I'm sometimes amazed by how she's catches it and she's right on with it. And then she laughs at all the right parts. And like I said, she gets like with Buffy. You know, Buffy's just another drama, and she just gets like caught up in the, in the things. And it's funny that you mentioned Twin Peaks. I'm worried about Twin Peaks for her because Twin Peaks, even though like you said, it, it goes, he shot it to look like a, an old TV show. Mm-hmm. And and like from the fifties and sixties, and he wanted that feeling. And the man, the fact yeah. that you mentioned, I'm glad because you got it, mm-hmm. and that's what he wanted. And uh, and his point was, I'm gonna make, t- I'm gonna flip TV over his head, and I'm gonna add a lot of shit, like you know, incest well, and, and shit this, like that. Well, there's like introduced. noir, and there's like this noir, great under, noir, like, yes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's almost uh, and Calvin Clock is amazing. Uh, as fucking it, people. it reminds me of well, it's kind of like a Lovecraft style, nice Lovecraft. Uh, like well, and, and the reason it, well, it reminds me of a particular video game actually called Alan Wake, which I'm sure was inspired by Twin Peaks. Um, you know, yeah, I mean, so I'm, I'm like I'm saying that in. You know, like, like I'm sure Alan Wake was very much inspired by. Well, it's, it's yeah. also inspired by a lot of Lovecraft stuff, just in that kind of that vibe, that like off kilter tone. Yeah, yeah. which uh, Lynch does a lot in everything. You know, yeah. whether it's uh, Blue Velvet or what. You know, yeah. what. Um, but like, uh, there's that kind of like every everybody's got something underneath that's just yeah. not quite right, and uh, it is a strange show. But I don't know that it's so out there <laughs> nowadays, especially like you know. I was telling my parent, I was like, hey, you guys need to watch Twin Peaks, and they were like, oh yeah. The, with the log lady, uh, the log, like, the link was to remember it when it came out. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because yeah. uh, it's such a that was such a I'm sure it was such a strange. It, thing. Well, but, it was but amazing. It, it's, like, it's a weird show, but like in in a way that's you know it's it's a weird, but it knows it. And it's yeah, kind exa- of, it has exactly. Fun of it. I, I think it's funny because back then it was a water cooler show. I mean, everybody talked about it, and the show actually got up in the ratings like by the end of season one. 
Um, again, I can't wait to hear your what you think of it later on. I'm not going to give spoilers. And I know the show's over 25 years yeah. later. But still, I don't know anything about it, though, so to be fair. Yeah, and, and I it is entirely to spoilers. Fresh. I mean, I love sitting there. Rhonda says, what's going to happen? I say, keep watching. I'm not going to give out spoilers. She hates that. But, I mean... What's so great about it, though, is, like, the... Just that kind of... It's a really dark tone. I mean, right, well, like, right. like it's... it And even the show... The show still has kind of that noir... Yes, noir-ish yes. dark tone to it. But then there's that humor sprinkled in yes. that really gives it some style and some flavor. And yes, just... Uh, I mean, it really... It's terrific. I, I'm glad. I'm glad you're digging um, it. Yeah. And, and, you know, like... I, you know, did you ever see The Killing? Yeah, I have. The first season. I uh, that, that, well, I heard that's all that's worth that's all watching. That's all that's worth it. Too, but, yeah. uh, <laughs> I mean, like this reminds me a lot of the. First, I haven't seen, I haven't finished the first season mm-hmm. of the Killing, but it's better. Like it just, I mean, I, and a lot of people that might just be a, a standard statement. I don't know, but uh, you know, like it, it, it's kind of the same premise almost as yeah. the Killing, um, but it just I don't, the way that it intertwines just kind of this small town where everybody knows everyone yeah, and just yeah. all that. It's it's great. So that, that I'm really a, excited. I remember when that's why I watched uh, the Killing because. They, you know, Twin Peaksian, so you know that word Twin Peaks. But not as good. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I mean never, nothing, nothing can touch Twin Peaks. We'll see, but yeah, I, I mean, well, it, um, uh, I know what you, I know. Well, I know because you're smart. I know you're gonna end up doing what everyone does. I guess I'm just I love it too much. I can't break away. And be honest with it. I know. I heard that but season I know two. Is season a two, off it's, there. you're gonna you're gonna be like, yeah, I don't know about season. Two. I don't, but I'll, I'll, it's only I only got to get through one season. Oh no no yeah, yeah and, and, yeah. and it ends on such a cliffhanger. You're definitely gonna watch season two because the way it ends. Okay. But uh, yeah, so um. Well, we need to, we need to move on before we spoil. Yeah, I know something. we have to go to watch season one. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna smack I'm gonna smack you. <laughs> this is gonna happen. Yeah, but you enjoy it. You uh, enjoy no, it. it's great. Yeah. Um, so we need to move on because we need there's some there's well there's Two big movies that um, we need to talk about. Yeah. One, one that's a, a humongous movie. Yes, um, yes. Avengers, of course. The Avengers, Age of Ultron, yes. Uh, I'm going to let you do your thoughts on this first. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I guess it's good um, uh, because I'm the nerd, the comic book nerd. I liked it a lot. Um, Ooh, we might agree on this. <laughs> yeah, I liked it a lot. And, Based and, on your tone there. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say this. Where, where where we watched the first one from beginning to end, it, it's such a popcorn movie. It's so yes. okay. it's so you know this is it. This is where it's at. Now, two only because I know we all read on Facebook the future of Marvel mm-hmm. Phase Three. Yeah. There were so many opportunities to do a lot more stuff with this film, and they didn't do it. And it doesn't make me hate the movie anymore. Like I said, you you can watch the beginning and end. There is popcorn in between, but. It, the next film, is, as everybody knows, and, and again, it's stupid for me to talk the about the Civil War is next. The right? Civil War is next, and the Civil War, oh my God, like, I'm, I'm, I could jerk off. I'm every really time. excited. Yeah, the Civil War. Like really I said, I I, I stopped reading comic books when I was a teenager, and then in my late twenties or thirties, the Civil War reeled me back in. One of the greatest comic book crossovers in the history of the world. I mean, such a great storyline from beginning to end. Unfortunately, the movie won't even touch ninety percent of the comic book, but. Why go to Wakanda and not introduce Black Panther to save more time for Civil War? Why, um, like, like that was one thing when we went there. I was like jumping up there. I was like, oh, we're going to meet Black Panther. And we never do. So I'm like, all right, so that's another 20 minutes we're going to have to put on top of Civil War mm. in a two-hour and 30-minute time frame they were already given it. Okay, and, yeah. You know, and then it's like, okay, so you do that. Then then you, you hear a lot of stuff about the Registration Act, which is... I guess we should also just tag the spoilers for now, just so that we can talk about this open. <sighs> all right, all right. I mean, I, mean, so you, we, we, I, I think I both, of us, both of us have the same feeling about yeah, this yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have it for a slightly different reason, but you should go see it, I think. Oh, no, definitely. Uh, you know, for definitely, those of you yeah. that are listening that don't want to be spoiled... I don't know why. Yeah, go I, go I'm now. Assuming you, watch something else. You've watch probably already seen it. Yeah, right. Well, go watch Moon or Ex Machina. Or Ex Machina. Okay. No, go, go see Avengers. Though. I think it's good. Yeah, um, I'll go see the Avengers, and then we can talk about the movie. But yeah, and then you can come back and listen to this. But we're gonna do just spoiler tag. Yeah, I'm so the spoiler for you know, characters or anything like that. Even okay. even though some of them are in the trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even I didn't they, know. They, they, oh, I hadn't seen the trailer. They cut something out from. Oh, you never seen the trailer? I, I hadn't seen. And the I just read about it today on Facebook. It's gonna be on the DVD, but. <coughs> Again, Josh, we didn't see for time purposes. Because but it's this already is, two hours and, and, and yeah, 30 well, damn minutes. Yeah, I remember I read the week before when we came out, they said the official running time is, and then it said 12 or 33. And I was like, well, is that bad? But we're, I want I mean, now I see it could have been three hours. And and like I said, now I want Civil War to be four hours. I mean, like I said, they, now we got to worry about meeting Black Panther in this film. That takes away time. The Registration Act, when they were like talking about, oh, you know, the world is angry at us right now. Perfect opportunity to use the registration act at the end of the film. 
Again, not used. It was used at the end of Avengers and hasn't been talked about since. So that's another thing. What was the other thing uh, I didn't like uh, that they wasted too much time on? Okay. No, the rivalry between uh, Iron Man oh, and Cap. Oh, Cap. It was in yeah. there. It was in there with everybody. But still, Captain America at the end, they're all huggy-feely and they're not mad at each other. Why not begin it there? So we don't have to worry about going into the war saying, oh, why are they mad at so each other? The, you don't have to waste the scene. Yeah, and, and it's like it's too much that he didn't do. And of course, I know he's not doing Civil War. Maybe to him, he's like, eh, whatever. Like like Sam Raimi did with the Spider-Man films. But, but it's like now I'm worrying about Civil War because... There's just too much to do with too little time. And that's like I said, Civil War. And then they just, again, I mean, you can go to Facebook. It's like, I mean, gonna, but they just said uh, they're shooting a funeral scene now for Civil War. Well, it's just genius because I already know what's going to happen. I'm like, but then you can't make a two hour and a half movie with all this. Sh- I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, you, you tell me what you think. I mean, um, I loved it, but there's too much shit that they didn't do. So, so I, I think that there's too much shit. <laughs> <Too much shit. laughs> uh, I, and, and I think that the same thing that you're worried about Civil War was my complaint about this film. I yeah. feel like, and I think this is a great film though. I, I really yeah. still think, and, and I think the saving grace is Joss Whedon. I think he's just Always. such a great director. Great I think and apparently he kind of went out and said that he had just a hard time making this film. Yeah, and, yeah. and you know, yeah, quit. Well, he quit Twitter. That's another. I guess that he, <laughs> we could have talked about that in our news, but uh, you know, and just was like, uh, you know, he, apparently because his contract ended, so now he's talking crap about yeah. Marvel Studios. And yeah. um, but uh, you know, he said that he had a lot of a lot of a hard. He just had a hard time making this, and I'm assuming it's because of the studio saying, "No, you need this. You yeah. need this. Yeah. You need this in it." And he's like, "That doesn't work, though." You know, yeah. and I think that's where this film kind of. I don't. I'm not gonna say it falls. Well, it falls short of the original. I think definitely, um, definitely. Because and and you know, it's it's this. The original is such a great hour and a half long popcorn flick. You mm-hmm. know, you have it has some humor to it, has some wit, yeah. and that's what that's what elevates it above all the other films. I think is just that Joss Whedon charm. You know, mm-hmm. and but then this one, he just doesn't have room to kind of add his own style into it because there's so much stuff in this movie. It wasn't that funny. There were funny lines. I know that, like, and I don't know how the Avengers comics work. Is there, are there three comics? Or how does that, you know, like, or are there graphic, you know, I don't... Well, yeah, I mean... How many comics are there? And then, like, this is split into three films, right? Or will this be three? Obviously, you have the the other... Avengers Infinity War is is the big Avengers film. But, I mean, remember, the comic book was just Avengers up until the... He says, remember, I don't the, know. I'm sorry, yeah. I, I'm talking to the old <laughs> folk. That one I have no old, idea. old man who stumbled upon his podcast. I remember that. <laughs> um, but it, it, was always, it was always only the Avengers, and then they created a West Coast Avengers in the 80s. Okay. And that one was like, you know, <laughs> the people who weren't in New York, like Wonder Man, gave really stupid characters. And then they did this thing called the Great Lake Avengers, <laughs> which was just a comedy book. It was just like... Like Squirrel Man was in it, all these really gay characters, and and like you know you have these really big battle scenes, but it's mostly was his comedy. But in the in the late the two thousands in the aughts, they created three books. They had uh, the Avengers, the Mighty Avengers, and the New Avengers. Gotcha. Okay. And 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 that was because of the Civil War. You you had to create that. The Mighty Avengers was Iron Man, Miss Marvel, all the people who are for the Registration Act. You had the new Avengers, who were all the people who were against the Registration Act. What is the Registration Act? That's and, the, and, and they mentioned and that. they mentioned it in part one, which pissed me off. At the end, in the news story, he's like, uh, "And the government's considering doing a, a, a Registration Act against the superheroes." And they don't even touch on it on this one, not that big thing. But basically, after the Civil War, and, this, and again, I have not read if this incident's going to start the film or not. Small band of superheroes called the New Warriors. Again, a bunch of gay like Teen Titans. Um, they have a reality show on an MTV thing, and every episode they get their ass kicked by the bad guy. And it's like a running gag, and they're, they're, the team is like all apart. They don't want to do the show anymore, uh, but the show's live, and one thing leads to another, and they actually catch a really mean group of guys by surprise and kick their ass. And it's like going so fast, and, it's, and it, it plays like uh, um, Blair Witch. It's like you see it going on, you know, with the, the camera stuff on in each panel, and and you're actually like rooting for them, and then unfortunately, there's a bad guy named Nitro, who uh, so Mariner's niece. Uh, oh my God, not Luna, but I'll get I'll get to. Her. She chases him into a schoolyard full of kids, and she's like beating his ass, and she's like picks him up, and she's you're coming with me, and he goes not if I can up it, and his power is the power of a nuclear bomb. Okay. So he actually just lets himself go and kills all the kids in the school and wastes a, a whole mile of Connecticut. Okay. So that begins, they're like, holy shit, we can't have you here. Look at these heroes, they're young, they were irresponsible. 
They couldn't. They they knew they couldn't fight. And look what they did. We need to we need the heroes to come forward and register like uh, military men, cops, and stuff like that. And you know, Iron Man working with Bush at the time was yeah yeah. Don't worry about it. I got this. And you know, Captain America was there. Captain America's uh you know like you know covering the mic. And what are you talking about? You know, we got to discuss this. And he's like he's like oh you Captain America. You can't say no. And then they go back home and they have a big fight. And he's like listen. You know, Spider-Man, who is he? You know, uh, and then he starts naming people. says, nobody knows who these guys are. Gotcha. What if they don't want to come out and say he's who I am? Because then they're here, their villains are going to say, well, fuck you, now I know who you are. Kill all your people who love you. Yeah. That's the whole point of Spider-Man, you know. And so it ends up being where Iron Man's like, well, what do you, what do you, say? you can't say no to the government. And he says, yeah, fuck you, I just did. And he mm-hmm. goes, and whoever's with me, come with me and, you know, we'll fight this. And then a whole bunch of heroes, the new Avengers go to him. That's Wolverine, you know, Luke Cage, which is building up Daredevil, all those guys you see on Netflix. And they go off, and then, you, know, you have Iron Man, it's Marvel, all the big hitters, Artemis. So they go, and they for the registration. And then in the meantime, while all this is happening, you have this whole Dark Avengers thing on the undertone, which would be a great story, but they already fucked up uh, Iron Patriot, so I don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> so this is, what's, this is how the, the, the whole thing starts. Now, will they have that story? That'd be a great way to do something like that and to kill little children. That's how you would start. <laughs> that's a great premise. But, but you know, you know what I mean. But you know, it's like well, look at all the great because look at all the stuff that's happened, and yet yeah. they still haven't brought up the registration act, and they've done so much shit. And I'm like, so what are they going to do? With the, why would the registration act happen now? And then I'm saying, well, they got to do something fucked up, like kill a bunch of kids for them to. Whoa, now we got to keep these heroes in line. To <laughs> be saying, yeah. But that's the reason why this happens. I'm saying, so far, you had an alien invasion that destroyed... I bet you they won't introduce the TV show. I Like, I could see them just having it be uh, them? one of the main Avengers that the main accidentally Avengers that? screw something up. That's that would what, be interesting. As a, it, as that would a be filmmaker, that's what I would do. And that would make Tony Stark turn against... Or Captain America turn against yeah. Iron Man. And that would make sense. I, I, okay, I, I'll, I'll accept that a little bit. <laughs> even if it's, like, indirect. Like, even yeah. if it's, you know... Um, uh, well, I mean, honestly, like, the... I don't know, but yeah. Uh, back to back to this film. Uh, I mean, I I just think that you know, especially when you go back and you look at Avengers one and just the films that came out around it. You know, you yeah. have Captain America, Winter Soldier, and all that. They're all really simple, and they mm-hmm. have you know they sprinkle in little. They're like TV episodes. You know, they have they have a they have a running plot, but then you have these sprinkles of we have a, a greater plan going yeah. on. We have yeah. we want to tie all these things in. Just like a television show would, you know, you spend forty minutes on your on your episode, yeah. but then you've got ten minutes of here's like the stuff that we're really <laughs> dying for. Um, but so you have all that, but then you have this film that they just try and cram in so damn much. I mean, you have you have literally twenty characters mm-hmm. at this point, you know, mm-hmm. not not and not just superheroes. I'm talking mm-hmm. about you know all the Shield characters, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, yeah. uh, what's her name from How I Met Your Mother, and yeah, then you have like all. now you have Jeremy Renner's family. You have yeah, okay. um, uh, you have like the you have Vision. Is Vision, the name, right? yeah, yeah. So you, have, you have Vision, which is the best. Paul Bettany is amazing. I, yeah, he was cool. In that he's shit. he's great. Um, and then you have you have uh, Scarlet Witch and uh, quotations, <laughs> whatever um, they want to actually refer to them as, because I guess or do they what do they ever give. A name to Quicksilver and oh in Pia- this. yeah Pietro and uh, Wanda and, and it says it because when um Jer- Jer- sport with these we already said so we're fine so when Jeremy Renner at the end his baby it says uh, Nathaniel Pietro uh, Barton okay so so his, his name is Pietro her name is Wanda uh, I like that they're using Wanda because Avengers, Avengers disassembled has Wanda in it so I, that's why they're keeping her. Quicksilver, though, I heard that he's on, he was on Facebook saying he's in one of the movies. So hmm. I guess he comes back from that. Maybe his... He, he Nobody so ever dies. The bullets the... come out. He, yeah, right. <laughs> that, was, but, that was really good. I like that. That, that like, drama scene. Where, like in Buffy, somebody got to die. You know, anything to touch by... I tell, I tell Ron, though, if it's just written, directed by Josh Whedon, somebody dies. And everybody dies in that yeah. episode. So. I, I just I just feel like the best stuff from this movie was Joss Whedon, and yeah. the worst stuff was just them trying to cram. And I, I do really don't think it's Joss Whedon's fault because I think he no, had no, a no. checklist yes, yes, of so things far. he had to hit in this film. And now I don't I don't know why though because they've sprinkled this out. I mean I don't know, and this is just from a lack of comic book knowledge. I just don't understand why all of this had to be in this film. Yeah. Uh, you know, the introduction of, well, uh, Quicksilver. I mean, like, Quicksilver. they, they could have... Like, thankfully, they did that in Captain America. At least we could, uh, you know... Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but, like, we could have done all... We could have had... I don't know. It's just... 
uh, and there's just certain action sequences that feel kind of shoehorned in, mm-hmm. and it just doesn't feel like this cohesive piece of like narrative. It yeah. doesn't feel like a narrative piece, um, but it just feels like a bunch of things that yeah. need, needed to be here. Yes, and, yes, yes. Um, but then it also needs to sell tickets, and we also need to have, you know, and it's it just, and I, I think it was too much for Joss Whedon to handle, and that's not his fault. I really am not going to no, no, blame yeah, him. Because so. um, I, I still think, I think, like I said, I think he's the reason it's any good. Um, because I without him, I, I don't think... Oh, 100%. Uh, I, uh, but, like, and, and then just, honestly, uh, there there were times in this film, and I I love challenging films. I love, mm-hmm. you know, complicated movies, and I'm not saying that as a, in a pretentious way. I just, I do... There are movies mm-hmm. that I really enjoy that are, are really complex. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are times in this film where I don't know what's going on, and it's because, <laughs> for instance, um, the... Uh, the villain's plan. Okay, we haven't talked about Ultron. Ultron's Ultron. great. I think James yeah, Spader's great. James I don't know about in terms of uh, in in his relation to the source material. I don't know, but okay. just as a character, I think he's a good villain. Well, well, I'll say this as a kid, as a kid reading Ultron, I've always heard him have this like you know, metallic voice. Yeah, and then James Spader does yeah. it. I'm kind of like, charismatic, like, like, but, but he's almost so, sarcastic. But, but he's, that's great. Yeah, but that's that exactly. I'm like. Now every time I, I see Ultron, I'm thinking James Bond, like, and he's he's a much better villain than Loki was. I think I think oh, Loki's yeah, great yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, like no, he's no. a he's a great, yeah, just charismatic. Was. Just mm-hmm. somebody was like, I want him to be more evil. I'm like, no, because that's been done before. I want yeah, yeah, him yeah. to be kind of that, that's interesting. You know, yeah. that's uh, and so the the direction of just his personality is 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 great. I think I think it's a really he's a really great villain. Just like Joker, just like all these villains that are yeah. iconic, mm-hmm. they have some like. Sarcasm to him, you know, or just some kind of edge. I mean, that yeah. you know, that that's great. Um, I don't understand his pl- his plan with the metal. I mean, I get that, like the you know, it's, I like I get. I, I understand you know, he's trying to cleanse the world. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah, and, like, yeah. I get that, but then there's, like, like he's going to use the metal from Captain America's shield, and that's stored in this bunker underground, ran by uh, Smeagol. Yeah, and, Smeagol. And, and then, you know, <laughs> and then he, he's going to transfer money from some random account because he has, a, like, and then, and then he's going to use that to build a new suit, but then also use it to, and I'm just like, this is, for a movie that's two and a half hours long, yeah. that has all... 20 characters that that has all of these different elements that it's trying to include mm-hmm. this villain's plot does not need to be this complex or at least it doesn't need to be explained in a way that's just or the and then the like bond villain then the yeah exactly like like you know uh, then i will do this and this and this it's like how about you just uh, that doesn't need to be 17 yeah. parts like that needs to be just I'm gonna I'm gonna take over the world. This is how I'm doing it. We're done. You know that needs to be a four minute just like you know it's like and then the scene where he shows up, and then they have a shoehorn in fight scene because they wanted to have a fight scene in that bar, <laughs> and then he starts talking. It's like yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't what it what like it's like a video game when you when you fight like an enemy, and then like you, you get to the point where he's almost dead, and then they have a conversation, and then like a, a cut scene starts. Like <laughs> it's just like I said, it just there's so many things happening in this movie, uh, so many new characters, you know, old yeah. characters that there's a shoehorn. I mean, I I know this is in the comics, but there's mm-hmm. a completely shoehorned in love yeah. story between Scarlett Johansson and, and, the, and Hulk. the Hulk, yeah. which isn't it's not bad. No, it's not. It's but not. But it, it's out of nowhere. I mean, because it's in the comics. But no, but I, I mean, the scenes were laying in that whole opening enticement scene where she gets him in India and the whole nine. I mean, you yeah, can see yeah. that it's going to begin there, but True. then it's not touched on, and then then all of a sudden, like you said, yeah, it's we there. take we take a three movie break. Doesn't mention it in Cap. Doesn't exactly. mention any other movie between. Yeah, in fact, in there, Cap, yeah. you would be more inclined to think that she'd be interested in him. Cap, which which showed a little bit of that too. And, and that's like, interesting. Oh, bitch. You know, <laughs> but if it, but then but it didn't need to be in this movie, and you didn't need to spend Agreed. as much time on it, honestly. Well, um, then maybe they did it just so I you think can... it's. I mean, it's a good. Like like Scarlett Johansson's great, you know. Mark Ruffalo is just a fantastic actor. Yeah, I think is, both of them are just incredible, but it just doesn't. It feels out of place in this movie because it just there's so many things and it just. <laughs> um, it, but like I said, it's still a very good film, and that's yeah, no, no, that's is. a huge testament to how good of a director Joss Whedon is. Great, because yeah. like I said, um, this under anyone I mean I, there's very few people I think that could really balance this and yeah. um, get something out of just all of these you know, yeah, balls yeah. And he each want, other. And I think right now <clears throat> he's lucky because the DC bought him um, they're giving him a movie don't know what it is um, of course he's always wanted funny speaking of Angel I mean Angel was his Batman you know no matter what um, I can't wait to see a Batman movie done by Joss Whedon but that unfortunately 
I think if, if it's not going to be the Justice League, they're going to give Wonder Woman, which is what he wanted 10 years ago, right after Buffy. I would love to um, see him do Justice League, though, because I think oh, he's, just, again, yeah, because one of just the few. Don't to give that to Zack Snyder. Oh, no, no. I, yeah, I don't think they will, but let's see how this Superman movie goes. Yeah, because that will determine. I think that will determine if he gets Justice League or not. But, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I loved it, but like I said, there was a lot of reservations in me, and I'm so worried about Captain America Civil War because I guess that's my baby. I mean... I like I said, no. I mean, comics. Oh. Comics brought me in um, the Ultimates, which was the comic that brought me in when I was uh, in, uh, uh, twenty-eight. But I stopped collecting again because I, had, I didn't have the money. But then again, Civil War in two thousand six. I mean, such a great, expansive storyline. So much happens in it, and I really, really do hope they do it justice. I mean, with but two and so a half much, hours, so much happens though can be okay. It's all about you know how it's presented and and it just because I'm surprised for you to tell me and there's nothing wrong with it I'm I'm glad because like I said I I, I love that you love the movie but it's interesting like I was it was like you say I'm on a roller coaster and so much is happening but I love it because I'm a, and I, and I dig that but I'm the kind of guy different because I'm so anal with co- continuity and I'm like yeah. I want this to be this and I want this to be that and I knew what was going on and granted that plot was right I was like. Uh, James well, but Bond. It's not even, it's not even like the plot that's the problem. Not it's the plot. The, I, I mean, um, it's the scenes. It's the Ultron's expository scenes plot. where they discuss why the AI is what it is, it, and yeah, saying yeah, just yeah. like, no, this <laughs> this needs this is a two and a half hour movie. movie yeah. This scene needs to be cut. cut yeah. It does not need to be in it because I, honestly, I know that that might be important, mm-hmm. but it could be said in a simpler way. Literally mm-hmm. just, yeah, this AI is good, this one's bad, and it's trying to take that one over to control like, all you these robots. See, so, all right. Like, I get how, that, I'm, like I said, I could get that wrong, but yeah, I'm saying yeah, you no, could no, explain no. that in just a simple, like, you know, because it, it pops up and he's like, oh, the microorganisms are moving. It's yeah. like, shut, shut the hell up. It doesn't make any <laughs> sense because it's not... I mean, even if it's based in somewhat scientific reality, it's not important. Because, like, yeah. you know, the science in a film doesn't make it smart. Yeah. The, including scientific backstory isn't doesn't make it smart. It's all about, you know, how it executes, you know, how it uses maybe cool technology or stuff. You don't need to explain to me what that technology is, which when we talk about Ex Machina is going to be, I think, is that's a hu- it's a huge accomplishment that that yeah. movie... You know, it's a huge thing that that movie accomplishes. It literally, there's a scene with Oscar Isaac and uh, Domino Gleason where he says, "Well, but how did you program it or do that?" And he's like, "Stop worrying about that." And he like sarcastically <laughs> tells him, "It's like, dude, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah, you know, like it's here, just <laughs> exactly." And it's like, it's like right that's that's all that matters, you know. And um, but this it, is a movie that, yeah, like I know that you need to explain some things. Yeah. That's fine. Like, yeah, like yeah. The, I know that you need to explain what type of metal they're using. Yeah, the vibranium, which is Wolverine's claws and Cap Shield. Yeah, but I mean, you can, you know but you can cut. Like three scenes, out. you can yeah. cut ten minutes of dialogue See, out of even, that. But even, even okay, like the scene with Thor, obviously that had nothing to do with this movie. That's to do with Ragnarok. Yeah, Thor's next film. Why was that there? I yeah, mean, yeah, I, that didn't need to be there. And, and even cut the girl. Oh gosh, and and see the girl. That was the another water, thing when he know, shows I'm up like, and slams the the hammer down on the tank that's holding yeah, the vision. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I have no clue what's happening. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I follow the overall storyline because it's simple. Bad guy comes. Everybody's got to assemble to to kill the bad guy. I get that, you know, but then that's why this. That's why it's so infuriating yeah. when they add all this stuff into it. And it's just like, I have no. It is pouring outside. Yeah, yeah we're gonna have a big storm. Uh, oh, I'm hoping no. I can get my kid to the doctor and back without yeah. getting another flash flood. <laughs> but anyway, well, and I just think and that's why. I mean, I hope that they got <laughs> a lot of this stuff out of the way. Just, I mean. It's kind of that choke point into phase three, right? Uh, yes, you know, and, yes. and, and, and I hope that they got a lot of the stuff they needed to be able to kind of have a cleaner yeah. film for Civil War just to kind of have that be more like Captain America, Winter Soldier, just kind of a strip down, yeah, good film, you know, yeah. um, not a lot of, not too many elements to it. Um, mm-hmm. That's, I, you know, I just, this is just so, I don't know that I want to go see it again. You know, a friend texted me earlier um, and was like, do you want to go see Avengers tonight? And I'm like, I don't know that I want to because yeah. that's, it's it's somewhat exhausting. I actually you know? got a ticket for all the cereal boxes. I got another ticket, but I was like saying, well, what am, what am I going to go again and see? And I don't know. Because it's, first of all, it's two and a half hours. Yeah. So you got to yeah. like donate your time. And then, uh, but like I said, it is still a really good film. It, it is. Just, it is. I enjoy it. And like it. I said, they, when, that, when Joss Whedon's stuff comes out of it, it's like, yes, that's what I want. Mm-hmm. But there's too many, there's scenes that, also, the scene when when Iron Man splits up to go 
it's like, all right, we're gonna go fight the bad guy. I'm gonna go and, and hack into his bank accounts or whatever. You know, that whole like that whole thing. that's not what he did. But you know, he goes yeah. to the the he goes he goes to the place to do something, and I have no idea what it was to be honest. Because again, the way they explain it to me is have a couple of people talk about it, and then we cut to establishing shot of city, yeah. and then you know bad bad things. It's just like I. You can't, like, for me, I, I don't work that way narratively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't just explain where you're going and then cut to that. And yeah. I, it just doesn't work. You just have to show me and you just have to, like, because yeah. I, I don't listen to people talk in movies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's a big problem I have because yeah. I won't know characters' names. I won't know, you know, which we're going to talk about in Heron Vice later also. Yeah, yeah. Another, uh, <laughs> I love that um, you know, I, so I don't I, I don't keep up with what people say because I like visually taking in a movie. Yeah. You, like, and uh, I was talking with a good director friend of mine. He was talking about how a movie should be able to visually represent everything that's happening. You should be able to understand mm-hmm. what's happening in a movie based on how it's, it's shot, it's based not. on, and that's I think that's a uh, that's a certainty. I mean, I think yes. that's absolutely a must. This is a film though that you cannot follow <laughs> just by watching it. I mean, it's uh, but it, it's it's no Transformers though. I don't think in that regard. You know, you're not like it doesn't hurt your head to watch. Yes, yes. But uh, it, there is just too much. Um, so yeah, uh, I mean, I, I guess still give it a solid like B plus. I think yeah, it's, yeah. it's just not the A plus that the yeah. that the first one was. Agreed. Um, Agreed. So. Uh, we're going to move on because I'm going to cover Ex Machina real quick. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, there's not a lot to say about it because I don't want to spoil anything, but mm-hmm. um, really fantastic science fiction film yeah. uh, starring Oscar Isaac, Donald Gleason. I actually don't remember the name of uh, the, girl. The, uh, the girl, but it's written by, uh, I think it's Alex Garland, I believe. Uh, mm-hmm. He was the writer of 28 Days Later, 20 which days is later. one of my favorite films of all time, I would say. Um, this is this is a, a terrific directorial debut mm-hmm. from this director. It's not perfect. I think there's some elements of just sci-fi, general sci-fi stuff that I've seen before, but it's so visually breathtaking. Even though I went to uh, see it at AMC and their projector was broken and was uh. kind of flickering every once in a while, and it would it would increase in brightness and I, it drove me nuts. <laughs> but other than that, it's a gorgeous film. Um, your performance, like, and uh, really a sh- surprisingly great performance by Oscar Isaac. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you have this. The, the premise of it is um, Donald Gleason wins this uh, this sweepstakes type thing and gets to go for a week to go live with or uh, basically stay with this scientist that owns the company he works for. Let me pause this. Question. Hello. That is more important. Um, so he goes, he wins the sweepstakes to be able to go and uh, live with the scientist who owns the company that he works for. Oh, um, okay. And, and that, that scientist has created an AI. Um, and he's supposed to perform a turn, I think it's turn test, I believe is, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know the, the actual word, but it basically it's um, testing to see if it has consciousness and testing to see if... The um, scientist is doing this, not Domino Gleason. The scientist is having Domino Gleason perform this oh. test... With his AI oh, to find works, out. Okay, okay, he works for the company. Okay. Yeah, um, to basically uh, test whether or not it's a it's a proper AI. Apparently, the test is. Uh, in I'm quoting the movie. I do not know the back. You know the the Wikip- I have not read the Wikipedia page about this. Yeah. Um, but the he uh, the, the test is to interact with the AI and not know that you're interacting with it. And you've the test has succeeded if if that's the case, um, uh, which is interesting. Uh, it's an interesting yeah, um, yeah. science fiction concept. Uh, and and then think you know in the trailer you see things get darker obviously everything's yes. not what it appears to be I'm not gonna spoil anything yeah. um, but uh, but what's so great about this movie is just that I, Oscar Isaac has so much charisma like and you have this 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 character could be played by just this kind of grumpy and Oscar Isaac is certainly grumpy but like just just that's it like there's just this just kind of like oh like you just need to do this and that's what you need to do but he's kind of this guy he's like an alcoholic and he just kind of is like nah bro like just. <laughs> just do it, like, and that's that's like that's like the, that, that's just his attitude towards this whole thing. He's just kind of like, you know, hey man, how you doing? And mm-hmm. and and Donald Gleason's like, oh, it's such a pleasure to meet. You. He's like, dude, like, can we just like? He's like, I get that you're all excited to see me and stuff, but can we just be two dudes Dude. hanging out, and drinking a beer, <laughs> which is just fantastic. That's yeah. such great writing because it it takes this kind of simple character and makes and really fleshes it out and gives it some. 
um, some real meat. So I, I, I think this movie's great because of him, if nothing else. But it also has just breathtaking visuals, um, you know, incredible like production design. Like it's yeah. just there's all these like there's these you know, and one thing is really difficult to shoot in rooms with lots of windows or like things that can reflect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's really difficult to hide lights to do all that stuff. So like. But this movie, there's like every time that he interacts with the AI, there's a wall, there's a glass wall in between them. But there's all these like there's these layers to the architecture of this building. It's just it's really impressive, um, especially for it doesn't have a lot. It doesn't have a huge budget. It's produced by a A twenty four who yeah. produced like a Lock and mm -hmm. uh, Under the Skin and all these really great yeah. like little independent films. Um, great company, keep doing that. It's they're just they're and uh, Enemy. They did Enemy yeah, as well, yeah. which is just fantastic. I mean. Yeah, great, and so, the, the, but I'm sure they didn't have like a forty. I don't know what the budget for this film was, but you know, it wasn't like a you know hundred fifty million dollar budget. Yeah, yeah. But it looks like it. Yeah, it does, from, you know, from it's the just, smart, uh, trailer, yeah. So, um, great, I, a really solid film. Not perfect, but really, really solid, um, and just breathtaking visually. So, and uh, again, great performances. So you, you need you should go see it if you can see it yeah, in the theater. Definitely do. Um, yeah, I think it's worth just kind of taking all that in. Um, on the big screen, so that's that's all for Ex Machina. Oh, okay. um, and then I did see. Uh, I also saw a Most Violent Year. Yeah, what'd you do I'm not. That? I'm not gonna go oh. in depth on that one. Great, Great old movie. school yeah. mob movie. It's okay. it's not. It's set in like the early '90s. I think it's not Is like it? a. It's more. It's it's like a Sopranos mm -hmm. era, but it's set before that in terms of like what time period it's set mm -hmm. in. But it just kind of has that vibe to yeah. it. Um, kind of a modern gangster film mm -hmm. um, and Oscar Isaac is so fantastic in it. I mean, he he's incredible yeah. in, that, in this movie. Just just in in the, his presence on screen, it, it it's a it's a really terrific film. It's from the guy who did Margin Call, I believe, and I which I haven't seen um, I don't remember his name either. Um, but uh, it's it just from like like another a visual, it's a, just a great looking movie. It has this kind of green and yellow color palette to it that um it just, takes place in brooklyn though right yeah it's in new york i don't know yeah i don't, I don't know, know. Yeah. that's why i wanted to see it because it's supposed to be brooklyn but yeah um and it you know there's there's some just there's some really good stuff in this movie uh it's just a great character piece yeah. about this guy who's really trying to kind of stay on the right side of things yeah. and um it's uh, it's one of the, i mean I, like i always say this you know it's, it's one of the best <laughs> films i've seen uh it's a it's a damn near perfect film i think yeah. just for what it's trying to accomplish um so yeah go go see that as well uh you don't have to go see that that's uh, on dvd or on blu-ray is it um i bought it it's it was, like, it was list, cheap right? it's like 15 bucks or something yeah. uh for the dvd blu-ray combo so um, I also saw Inherent Vice, which both of us have yeah, seen. Have so seen let's it. talk about this. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm really excited to talk about this because I <laughs> really love this film. Oh, okay. Uh, it is. <laughs> I, I I agree with every single complaint about it. Yeah, yeah. Not because I think that's a problem, though. Mm -hmm. um, it's a confusing film about a right. about a uh, stoner play or stoner private, private investigator played private by Joaquin private. Phoenix that. Um, Basically stumbles into all of these different <laughs> scenes involving uh, strange individuals, including Josh Brolin, who is just he's great, Frank fucking style. awesome in this movie. Uh, uh, that, that scene where he's riding the car, looking at Josh Brolin as he yeah. eats a banana. <laughs> it's one of the funniest, uh, funniest scenes I've seen uh, in at least last year. Um, and he he gets involved in this plot, this really overly complicated yeah. plot about uh, it's it's essentially his former girlfriend yeah. is currently having an affair with this married man played by um, Eric Roberts. Yes, uh, and he his his wife is also having an affair with someone else and they want to like get him institutionalized uh, yeah and she knows about it and so is having him invest that's essentially the plot uh and then it goes in all kinds of directions um well i don't remember what you really thought about this now we can, I, we're gonna do spoilers on this too no i told I, you I, I liked it but i don't i told you that number one a lot of shit was going on and yeah. it's like you have to Pay attention to every scene. I had subtitles, so I was. Oh, okay. I, I actually, oh, so you saw it, you saw it on DVD then. You yes. Just, oh, okay. So I actually feel like I understood this movie enough, <laughs> and 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 therefore, like I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, continue. It, it, you, you know what it reminded me of, and again, I didn't bring it up last time because we didn't have a lot. 
Night Moves. You ever seen Night Moves <laughs> oh, with Gene yeah. Hackman and mm-hmm. Melanie uh, Griffith? Check it out. You might. It's a 1974 movie, 72 movie. And basically a private eye who is older, but he connects with the hippie culture. Yeah. But he was an ex-cop who, you know, got thrown out for whatever reason. Uh, they pinned something on him. And he ends up getting himself into this, like, tech type of child pornography thing. Um, it's very much like that because you have, you know, this, like, well, but Joaquin is just straight up a hippie, stoner, more than a private eye, yeah, I think, yeah. you know? <laughs> I think he just... Yeah, like he's he's a man that should not be employed. employed. Let's say that much. It's like the whole scene with Martin Short. Yeah, that was is, that's probably the best scene in the whole. Yeah, film. Right. and and that's that's very much. It reminds me of the scene from Boogie Nights. Boogie, with, uh, interesting. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The pop rock scene. That's which right. Is one of the best that's right. scenes of that's all time. Right. I think. That's right. Uh, that's right. That's right. That's how good this Martin Short scene is. Though <laughs> yeah, uh, there, there's so many great elements in this film. Yeah. Um, it's funny. It's really funny. I yeah. really think this is... The, it's not like... And I, I'm actually going to compare it to Big Lebowski, which is a comparison that's been made. Oh, um, oh, not oh, in oh. terms of funniness. It's no, not no, no, that no, funny. I'm because you love Big Sorry, Lebowski. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I, mean, I, 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 I brought that in at a weird uh, yeah. time. No, but not in terms of... It's like no, Big no, Lebowski no. if Big Lebowski he's had a private eye stone or yeah, yeah, yeah. heart to it. Um, Big Lebowski is, a, is one of my favorite films. Ever. Yeah, and a much better it's film. Not, so. and it, I, th- I would... Well... I, I think this is a uh, it's they're different movies they're all very different movies but the <laughs> same the same premise though and the same yes. the same humor kind of just you have this this stoner that's caught up in this plot that's way too complex for mm-hmm. him yeah, to handle um, and and th- and that's uh, you know it's something that I think is that's what Big Lebowski is one of my favorite films and it's because I love that yeah. concept I love stupid or kind of ignorant people that get stuck in. Just situations that they're not prepared for, yeah. um, uh, and uh, this. Uh, but then this movie has some heart to it. I think. Yeah, it does. And, it does. and I understand. But like I said, there's most of the complaints about it are. I was so confused that I didn't care. That's a fair complaint. Um, I was up for the challenge of sticking with it, mm-hmm. and and I knew that the movie was like being in it's. And this is obviously an argument. Somebody could say, "No, no, it wasn't. It's just too confusing, and it, it and it's not. It's intentional. I think it's intentional. I do too. Yeah. Um, and I think that's uh, it's supposed to be just kind of this, yeah. you know, this thing that doesn't quite make sense. Yeah, uh, but I, I but I did understand. I did. I feel like I did get what happened. Um, you know. In, yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. And, and it happened. Whatever you think happened. Because <laughs> you know, like the, the the whole storyline, like you said, with um. His girlfriend with the with the, the rich dude, the, the developer, congressman, whatever he was. That was like the height of the story. And then like it just goes away. It and devolves then, and into it devolves into the other story this, about this the weird with, uh, yeah, with the, the whatever they were. The but that was interesting. Asian, no, no, well, and it's, no, 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 no. I, and I and I dug it. And then you know, Frankenstein gets the drugs and put the drugs. Yeah. Up. And I then, love Owen Wilson in this movie oh, yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah, he was good too. Yeah, he was there, kind of I just, subtle. Uh, on my way here, or before I saw, before I left today, I saw this mashup of every time he says "Wow" in the movie, <laughs> and it's it's great. It's so great. Uh, you guys send me that. <laughs> he's amazing, and uh, he's really he's really great in this film. I I think he his, is. He's subtle. In the movie. His character and uh, and in just the whole thing with his wife and him trying to break away break from this away, cult yeah. kind of mm-hmm. thing is uh, there's actually some genuine like I well, part part of the reason is because it motivates Joaquin Phoenix's character and yeah. um and I think it's it's uh, it's you know everything that Joaquin Phoenix does in this movie is for like a kind of like non selfish reason and like, like yeah, yeah. you know his his character has really pure just yeah. kind of. Very, uh, I mean, I love that. I don't know. Like, I, I feel like I haven't seen that in a while. Like, like it's not like for revenge. It's purely yeah, yeah. to just help people, and that's interesting. Um, I, I and not that, I've, that not that that's never been done or anything like that. <laughs> um, it's just uh, that was I, I didn't expect that from this film. Um, yeah, yeah. But then he also is kind of like you know he's willing to kind of be sarcastic with the police. <laughs> the funniest scene in the whole film uh, is the scene where he throws a pot at Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> it is it is the funniest thing I've seen on screen. I laugh for like a good thirty seconds at that, like out loud. I might have woke everyone else up because he's angry. Angry because Joaquin Phoenix sets or uh, Josh Brolin. Sorry, did I say Joaquin Phoenix throws a pot at Josh Brolin? Uh, he Josh Brolin was trying to like set him up and like 
all this stuff happens, all this shit happens, and then uh, they, Josh Brolin says that his car was parked illegally, <laughs> and so he takes it to an impound lot, and <laughs> when Josh Brolin goes in to bring the car out, Joaquin Phoenix throws a plant at him, and it's so funny, because he, like, tears it from the roof. <laughs> yeah. like, I, I, I mean, I, it's, I can't wait to watch that again, because it's just, well, what's so funny about the humor is it's, like, sprinkled in, in, like, these little just tiny like for instance the scene with uh, Owen Wilson's wife fian- whatever yeah, she is it's, it's his, it's her, his wife, his wife yeah. when she shows Joaquin Phoenix the picture and he goes oh! like it's, <laughs> it's just, the scream that he lets out is just so hilarious or uh, you know and some of these moments are in the trailer but they're yeah. still just so strange and so <laughs> just kind of I, what, what I like is that this is the return of the Paul Thomas Hansen I enjoy uh, even dude, though this he's is always, not, he's, he's this, never I know, I know you feel that way but I hated Master I hated I uh, so there, there Will Be Blood um, but this movie is just so non-stop I mean like I said there's things in both films not, not even the, I don't know what to say about the Master but more there are a couple of things I dug about There Will Be Blood but not as a whole uh, I just I love this movie I, I just kept laughing in the theater I mean it, it is so, so funny. funny. He is so fucking funny. Hawking Phoenix is great. Yeah, Everybody's great. great. Yeah. It's you know, uh, it's shot really well. It's yeah, just, yeah. Even though you know, Red Letter Media actually did a full review of this, and they, they didn't like it that much. But mm-hmm. they, uh, they, you know, they're mentioning like it's kind of like establishing shot and then close up, close up of everybody in a conversation, <laughs> which I think is fair. But it's still just so textured, and yeah. the production design is really great, and and just every I, I, there's something to that cinematography, even though it's simple. Same with the master. Mm-hmm. Like it's not this sweeping. Shots of, I mean, some in the master you do have those desert scenes that are just breathtaking on a big screen. I think yeah. there's certain scenes in that movie that are, but for the most part, though, it's people having intense conversation yeah. at a table or whatever. And mm-hmm. so that's kind of it's kind of claustrophobic like that. I think that's just his style, but I, I do think it looks incredible. Just to, I don't and I don't know what it is that he does, but he has just kind of this visual magic that he works in all his films. Uh, I, he's he's probably my favorite filmmaker. I think uh, he's not he's not Kubrick for me. I don't think, but um, no. well, and I know you definitely say that because uh, you don't you don't uh, like his his what what are considered to be his best films. Uh, <laughs> Buggy Nights is his best film. Stop it. That's just, not that's not. I just that's not, that, that's not what you oh, name. That's not unanimously what everyone agrees. Oh, I, I, Buggy see. Nights is my favorite. I think his best film is The Master. I, oh my gosh go on but best and favorite are different things though yeah um the master is like that's a genuine like i i have an emotional reaction to that movie every time i watch it i love that film now but you haven't seen it more than once no I and not. i challenge you to go watch all of his films more than once well, I mean, I've seen all the ones I like. Yes, ones but but I that. challenge you to go see the master again yeah. because you will have a different reaction to it because it, it, it it's when you know where it's going it 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 feels more uh, like cohesive because um, mm-hmm. I agree with most of your complaints about the master yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally disagree with you on there would be blunt but um, <laughs> uh, you know uh, regardless you need to see all his movies yeah. but I'm so excited to watch Inherent Vice again because this was just yeah, I, I would like to see it again yeah, I, I mean it, right? most of the time I don't love his films the first time most mm-hmm. of the time it's, it's, it's after multiple because there's always something about his movies that and about the, the way he constructs scenes and the way that he Writes. I mean, he's such a great writer. I can't. I can't even comprehend. I, I, like, I don't know. Uh, we're gonna pause again. Yeah, the I'm gonna interrupt our break real quick to inform you all that Carlos is currently uh, urinating while talking on the phone. That is all. So we regret to inform you that we're gonna have to uh, end this podcast a little short. Um, go see Inherent Vice. Is all, is yeah, a, no, I, I is all you need to know it, about. It's not Criterion, right? It's just straight up regular blue release? No, it's just a regular blue release. Okay, yeah. Um, it's cheap, too. It's Well, maybe not. I don't remember what I paid for because I didn't care. But but again, <laughs> we both agree that Inherent Vice is a very good movie. I, I think it's funny. I think it's amazing, actually. So. You should, <laughs> and you should all go go see it immediately. Even I wish if you, you guys could see We need a radio hate. show. I mean, a, a TV show. Your faces are amazing. When you even, if you, <laughs> even if you hate this movie, you need to see it. And you need, to, you need to go see all of his other films because he's an amazing filmmaker and uh, I, I, I'm i totally going to drink the Kool-Aid when it comes to Paul Thomas Anderson because he's <laughs> the best. And listen, I'll drink the Kool-Aid from what he used to be. How about that? I still challenge you to go watch. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to watch There Will Be Blood again because I know you love that one more. I'm going to try to do the math. I don't think I can. But, uh, but definitely 
Inherent Vice, uh, I definitely want to watch again. I, I enjoy that movie very much. It's very funny. So we're at the hour mark. This is our shortest episode ever. Yeah, I, I mean, guys, this is real quick. My, my, my daughter, under my wife's ex-wife's watch, broke her arm. And uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I found out three days later. Now I'm taking care of her. Not even on my day. So I got to rush now to go to take her to the hospital, get her arm in a, in a cast. Which is more important. Which is very more important, but I love Jeremy. And I'm which glad is very we're back. more important, which is not a phrase. Which, which is funny because I, I got to tell Jeremy something, but we'll, we'll talk about this on the next show. But um, so uh, I guess... Uh, go see Avengers, go see Ex Machina, go see... Inherent or Vice. go rent Inherent Vice. And watch Twin Vine Peaks. And watch and all, all these things. This is a good week. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's a week where we agreed on everything. Yeah. <laughs> One of the big like, weeks. Like, I'm surprised with Avengers because that, that could have been an hour-long argument. Yeah, no, 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 no. We, we were on the same page and we have the same reservation, so we'll but see. Still go see it. It's, I think it's still yeah. very good, so... So yeah. uh, this is Carlos Hernandez. And I'm Jeremy Knight. Well, that was Jeremy Knight. And uh, good night. We'll see you next week for episode 15. Sounds good. Good night.